calculator allowed? Thank goodness. This is a question that I would suggest you do graphing if you possibly can. Um, if you don't have a graphing calculator, there are ways that you can sort of get the answer. We'll just substitute in values for x, right, and then see where the match is. Uh, a system of equations is shown. f of x is equal to the negative x squared plus 6x minus 4, and g sub x is the absolute value of x minus 3 minus 1. What is the greatest value of x? So that's a key point here. What's real popular to do is to give you these where you have to give a specific value and then you write in the value for y and you miss it. So you go through all the work and then you miss it on some ridiculous technicality. Welcome to the 10 ready test. So it's the last one you have to take, I think. So, I mean, in math. So that's good. Anyway, let's do some graphing. Okie dokie. I'm using the TI-84 to do this. I'm going to turn it on first here in a second. All right, here we go. So when I'm looking for f of x is equal to g of x, what I'm saying is um, g of x, um, is what points do they share in common? What are their points of intersec intersection? That's the big deal. So I'm going to just type the first one in, negative x squared. The other issue is just to make sure that you have the absolute value. That's not parentheses. This is absolute value. So you need to go into the math section here. Click over to, um, there's one here at 5. There's also one at number. It's the very first one. So you can type in x minus 3. Also, make sure if it's a negative, you're using the negative, And if it's minus, you're using a minus, that sort of thing. I don't know why I typed in a 1 there, when obviously I meant to type in a 3. And then you sort of have to old Nintendo your way out of this with the directional pad. And then minus 1. Now I'm going to graph. Wait. So I can see that the point where I have the greatest value of x is going to be right here. Now, there's a few ways that you can figure out what that answer is. You can start uh, checking it out in the table. Hit second, and then go to the table. Obviously, I wasn't hitting that. Um, and we can start to look for the x here will just be any generic x on the graph. The y2 and y3, that's where the specific functions are at any one point. So for instance, at one, the value of the first function is one, and the value of the uh, other function is also one. That's great, but we wanted to find the one that's furthest up, so we're going to look to see if there's any more. At five, you'll see that one and one are both the same, so that's completely fine. So my answer to this question is x is equal to five. And if you weren't sure, I mean, you could always go back and, you know, Regraph them, and then obviously here's one, so this is where the original intersection is. Here's where the second one is. What's another way you can look at this? So if we go back into hit second again and then hit the trace button above it says CALC, if you're not using a TI 84, you need to practice with that calculator. Uh, if you're using something else, figure out what it is to get absolute value and a few other things before you even get to the test. But you can go down to intersect, and then it'll just say, what's the first curve? Which is like saying, do I have it marked on the first one that you typed in? The answer to that is yes. The second one, yep. And then they want you to guess. The reason they ask you about guessing is because they would automatically choose this one if it's over there. So they're not sure which one you want me to tell you. Um, and you're just going to click where the little spidery little X thing is over on that side. And you'll see X is equal to 5. So there's your answer. What else could you do? Well, you could do a really long substitution that will suck all of your soul out and your time. So I would not suggest it. But we could sort of get a feel about where are things located that there might be a point of intersection. Uh, so you just substitute in values for x. So we'd try 0 first. And then you'd be able to, well, 0 squared is still nothing, and there's no such thing as negative 0. That's not how that works. Plus 6, uh, 0 is, so really what I'm doing is this. Uh oh. That's fine. I didn't need that anymore anyway. So these would be 0 and 0, so this is negative 4. And then you do the same thing here. Well, 0 minus 3 is negative 3. I have to have a value of that as 3. 3 minus 1 is 2. So at this one, 0 
is equal to two. So you sort of recreate uh, your own, kind of like the form that we had before. And then you go through with one, two, three, and go up for a while and have a feel for how you're going to go. But this is a graphing standard, so what they're looking for you to do is actually to graph it. If you wanted to start breaking it out into, I mean, doing x minus 3 is not the most complicated of all graphs ever. Uh, minus 3 means it's going to be, the vertex will be uh, here, and then this minus 1 here tells me to go down, so I need to make a point here. And then since it's x of 1, I would just go up 1 over 1 up one over one, up one over one. And then you can build the graph for this one and just v visually see where they're located. But again, my suggestion is that you just graph it. It'll make your life much easier if you can. And if you can't, you can always have a few other methods that you can do. But this might be one that I would sort of flag uh, for myself. Maybe I'd circle it or just say, okay, I'll come back to it later. And even on your answer document, make some sort of mark so you don't start like if you skip 12, you don't want to put the answer for 13 and for 12. So make some mark in there to indicate that you're going to skip it for now. Maybe a dash outside of the four circles on the right, uh, if it's the sort of scantron -y thing it usually is, and then go down to the next level. So flag it in some ways. That's if it's on paper, if it's on computer, depending on when you're taking this. Um, flag it and then come back, because it could take some time if you don't have a graphing calculator. If you do have a graphing calculator, it won't take any time at all.